everyone, it's Annette Green. I am here again working in my weekly 2023 memory keeping planner, my Vintage Black Elizabeth Craft Designs planner. I am documenting one week of every week in my life in 2023. So my goodness, we are on week 44 and this is one of two journals that it's taken to get there. So here's my second one, and if you were here last week, we worked on the Scarecrows on Main page with our little swing clip. So we could get more photos onto a page. We had our little peekaboo monster there. Uh, so that was a fun one, and now we're over here. I've pulled the page out, and I've started some thoughts on what I'm going to do. But this is basically what the page looks like right now. So let's work with that and put this thing together. As always, I will link to everything that I use today and uh, my social media links and that playlist link and all kinds of things. So I will not leave you hanging. All right, I have stuff everywhere because I've already been playing around trying to get a plan so I don't waste a bunch of time in front of you. Got all this cardstock and paper. But I have grabbed a new die to make this little edge treatment. We had had something very similar with Elizabeth Crafts uh, that looked like that, like a book page, torn book page. Um, but this is a newer die. So this is from Esther's new 2077 Yes Joy page. So it is a page die. It's got photo joy, yes, and a couple of treatments here. And this cute page, I was going to use it, but it was interrupting the size of my photos, so I changed my mind. But I am using that page edge. And as you can see, I cut it twice. I cut it in this orange and then I cut it again in this kind of golden yellow. And I flipped it and then glued that little bit onto the back there. So it has just a little more interest when you, when you do that rather than one solid one. And even still, I'm gonna do something to it because it's just plain cardstock. So I wanna dress that up a little bit. So I'm gonna stamp it, but we'll get to that. Some other things that I have ready, of course, my photos. And I use a PIXMA, Canon PIXMA TR8620 printer, and I use HP photo paper for all my photos. Uh, unless I'm traveling, then I use my little Canon um, selfie printer. So I have several of the same photos in different sizes. I like to do that just because I'm thinking, you know, maybe I can get it to work bigger, maybe I need to make it smaller. And rather than going back and wasting more photo paper, I just do it all here just in case, just to get ready. Okay, what else do I have? Of course I need my 44, so I've got that cut out of black up there. I think it's gonna be black. Uh, I have this Paris Mountain State Park uh, decal. I thought it was a sticker, but it's actually a car decal, but it'll work fine for my layout um, that we got at Paris Mountain State Park. And one of the pictures shows our all park passport. We just bought the uh, state park passport they call it so we can get into all the state parks uh, for paying one annual fee so we were pretty excited about that <laughs> and then you might see that photo of us with it looks like cigarettes but they're not those are little um, Tootsie Pops remember Tootsie Pops lollipop suckers whatever you call them uh, they were giving them out when we bought the park pass so I thought that was kind of funny to take that picture because we were like little kids with our little candy, you know. Another idea I want to see if I can get it to fit is some pine cones up here. Now, this is also a new die. And it's one of uh, the, like the flower series, um, flower making series. This is the pine cone, 2089 pine cones die. So you get two different styles of pine cones, two different styles of the, you know, greenery options. And then these are all the layers to the pine cone. And we're gonna put that together, so I'll show you that later. I've got the pieces already cut out over here to color and to shape, but this has already been die cut out of like a pine green color. So I'm gonna see if I can get that to fit. Also, we are into November now, so I did cut November out of a little strip of black. That comes from one of my favorites, Planner Essentials 56, the tickets and tabs. I, I just use this all the time. That's a die from Esther as well. Now, just so you can see that very cute pine cone die, 
there it is. This was a little something that we did at the retreat. It was one of uh, Elsa's classes. And I really wanted to see what would happen. You could layer these pieces like flat onto the pine cone base, which you'll see. But I wondered what would happen if I put a little foam tape under there and shaped these pieces. And I was really happy with how that turned out. Now, will I do that on my page in my planner where it's gonna get mushed? Hmm, I don't know, maybe. We'll see how it looks without doing it and then we'll make that determination later. Dig right in here. So I'm gonna grab that strip. I got a scrap piece of paper here and I have grabbed the dictionary um, stamp from my happy stamp set from my spring release this year. Uh, it's like a dictionary definition of the word happy. So I thought that would be fun to add to this and just, you know, randomly add some texture. So I don't even know if I don't have a block within reach. I think I'm just going to do it this way because it's going to be random. I don't care if it's perfect. I don't even care if it's terribly straight. That would probably drive some of you crazy, right? Um, yeah, just going to do that. I'm just using like a dark brown and I'm going to use different parts of the stamp. Uh, I am stamping on textured cardstock, so it's fighting me a little bit, but I'm okay with it. I don't need it to be perfect and super clear. It's just for texture. Okay, a little bit more down here. Okay, I think that's good. And so I'll ink those edges. And while I'm inking edges, I'm gonna ink this too. We'll talk about this. Okay. So what this is, is uh, just some paper from one of the older Reminiscence the books. I can't remember which one. I take them out of the books anyway and just file them by color. Um, but it is just a rectangle of paper that I want to put onto this black piece, which is something that's gonna go across the middle here. Just a, uh, below and above these two holes in the page die. And you can see my little slit here. You could do this with a single cut with uh, a craft knife. However, because I have this set, I used it. And I think I've used this um, before in one of my other pages, maybe. This is the December Day by Day 2023 kit. Uh, you've seen me talk about that class that was online. It's still saved there if people are jumping in later. But it does have this die in it, and it just cuts out this wonderful little slit with rounded top and bottom and the little stitching around the edges. And it's perfect for like a hidden tag, a little journaling. You don't have a lot of room maybe, so you can slide it under there and pull it out to read your journaling and then it doesn't get in the way of the rest of your elements on your page. So that is what I'm planning to do. And that journaling will go on there. So I'm just gonna get this piece of paper glued onto my little slit slot pocket thingy. I will say I intentionally picked this paper because of this little decal, how the blend of orange to yellow is there. And this does that same thing. So that wasn't by mistake. I actually picked that on purpose. Okay, so there's that. And I'm just trying to decide, do I want it on the page first and then this goes over it? Or do I want this to come over this? I kind of think I want that just because of that black border really separates things nicely. So I think I'm gonna go with that plan. So I just have to get this on next. Okay. Cool. Uh, before I can glue this down here, I have to, you know, I have to make sure I have some sort of stopper here so my tag doesn't go all the way in and get lost. So we'll do that in a minute. But before I do that, uh, see my little sticker here and see the color of this tag. I didn't have any cardstock that same color and I know it's a fussy little detail, but I want them to match a little bit better. But rather than testing things out straight onto the tag, I just grabbed some scrap of that same cardstock. And I am going to put like a little journaly, you know, lined tag on there, but still you're going to see those edges. So I'm going to try out, this is Peacock Feathers. And maybe I want to use the smooth side. I don't think I need to see all that texture. So I'm just trying to get it maybe closer to the color of those mountains in that sticker. Just so it coordinates just a little better. And it's, it's getting there. It could be a little darker. Just to darken it up a little more, let's try 
Weathered wood. Just needs a little more grayish blue to it. I think that's better. But this, yeah, this textured cardstock is kind of throwing me off. And it's pretty darn close. I think that's it. Okay, I'll do that to this. Cool. Uh, and I just grabbed the book six because I know that there's a lot of paper in here that is perfect for journaling. Uh, at first I saw that and I thought, mm, that's kind of perfect. Yeah, I think I might go with that. I mean, there is that other side too. It's very, very faint though. So I think I'm going to go with that, perhaps. As always, I recommend doing any journaling before you glue things down. So I did. <laughs> And also, if it's going to be in a pocket that you're going to pull it out of, like mine, or a slit, slot, uh, I do a lot of, like, glue right out to the edges so it doesn't snag when you go to pull it out of there. And I realized I didn't say anything in the journaling about the lollipops. And I don't know if we're going to have room anywhere else so I might put a little more journaling on the back about that we'll see I think I'll wait on that for now uh, but I did grab all my extra little um, hole reinforcements here to put something on the tag right here just trying to decide and I think I see something over here a little fold over one might be cute I got all these this one's pretty good okay Again, I'll get back to that later if I want to add more on the back. But, so what we want to do here is we want to figure out how deep we want that tag to go in there. Can we still grab it? I might put a little twine on there, I think. Uh, by the way, I use my crocodile to punch through uh, that. So, maybe... Maybe do we want a little of the tag showing? It's going to stick out pretty far if we do that. So I think we're just going to keep it right there, and I probably will put a little twine or something. Okay. Great. So we know that. Now, as I've done in the past, I make a little pencil line back here where I don't want any glue to come any further than that, you know, that area. So you take that out. And we would just put our adhesive here and down the side, other side, and then just under that pencil line. Okay, that ought to do. And then get that on our page. feel like it's crooked but you know it's not it's the paper <laughs> these lines in this uh, background paper are crooked and it uh, makes me a little crazy but it's all good and I am going to trim just a little of that off that's hanging over yeah that won't hurt anything Okay, I'm going to let that dry before I stick the tag back in there, of course. But now we have this guy. And I discovered that I thought you could peel off like just the, the decal right to the edge. But it actually takes up, you know, all that white around it. So I'm just going to trim really close to that blue. That teal blue edge. I didn't stick it down yet just because I'm still playing around but I did uh, cut out my little park pass the size that I think that I want and um, you see that little hangy hang tag situation I'm gonna punch the hole because I want to cut that out and I'm just gonna use the small hole mm, maybe the, no the bigger hole looks really big well, I'm gonna try it yeah yeah that works Okay, that's cute. And then I can go in here and just cut this away with my scissors. Oh, and it looks like a real little hang tag. Isn't that cute? Okay, so that is done. I don't know where it's going to go yet, but that's, that's part of why I want it cut out now so I can start moving things around and trying things out. But I guess we need to get to our 
pine cone making now. Okay, so as we see here with the pine cones, and if you look at the die when you get it, if you get it, it does show, like, always look at this little hint of an image here on the packaging because it shows you which one of these plates of all these layered pieces goes with which pine cone. So the wider one would get this one and so forth. Okay, so as soon as I die cut them out, I make sure that I get them in that order. So the skinny pine cone gets these pieces and I put them in the order that they are gonna layer on and they layer top piece to bottom piece. You got to remember that as well. All right, so I'm just going to do one at a time. Uh, let's see, I'm going to ink. These are cut from craft cardstock, by the way. A very light color, and I want to give them some dimension by coloring them in with vintage photo first, a little bit of red. Now, this is the base piece. This is what everything gets built onto, and do you see it? Not much, but I want it to be the darkest under there in case some of it does show. Uh, it should be very dark. So I'm just going to take gathered twigs right now and go around my edges. I could have used a dark brown cardstock to cut this piece out, but you know, I just cut it all at once. It's fine. Didn't want to mess around digging for other colors because it's not worth the effort on that one. Okay, so that is gathered twigs. Then we'll go in with. Um, got to keep these in order. This is a vintage photo. And I don't want to get the very tippy top with the color so much as the base. Uh, just hit it a little bit so it's a little lighter toward the top. And you'll see why when we get going. So I'm going to continue to do that to all these pieces. All right, I did one pine cone already, and I did it a little darker than what I had done here, and I like that a little bit better. So I'll show you how to do that with the second one. I went ahead and inked these the same way that I did that one. Uh, now I'm gonna shape, but before I shape, I did go in with a, like a medium brown marker, and I did a little heavier coverage, just kind of stroked some color uh, just below that beginning part with those little, I don't know what those are called, those little thingies. <laughs> so I'm just kind of stroking some brown like that. And you will see a little bit of that and it just gives it a little more dimension. There's these nice score lines that the die cuts into the paper there. And this last little bit I'll just kind of follow the score lines and go around the bottom a little bit. And then after I get everything done, um, I will go back and ink around the edges a little darker with that gathered twigs. Okay, so keeping my pieces in order, I think I got them out of order, but the easiest way to do this is to lay these down because they match right up with edge to edge like that. So the next one to check it to make sure uh, follows that little that little piece on the corner. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I should get in a little closer. Uh, yeah, so this one, like I said, we're going to go top to bottom. So I'm just making sure these are all lined up where they're supposed to be. And the next one would be that one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I've got them in the right order. And we'll start with this first guy. Okay, so first guy first, I'm taking a smaller ball stylus. And just kind of cupping that a little bit just to give it a little dimension. The sides are not going to get any kind of adhesive at all. Uh, just that middle base. And so I'm cutting just a square of black foam tape and I'm putting it right down there in the base. Okay, so that first piece will go on first at the top. <coughs> and I'm just lining up the little thingies with the base die. Okay, looks good. And you can kind of shape it, but you know, when you start to layer, it just kind of happens. Uh, now I'll go in with a little bit bigger ball stylus. These are just the Sizzix ones that come in the toolkit with this cushion mat. Same thing, a little bit of cupping. And I'll use that little square of foam tape that I had left over. 
just at the base. No need for glue around those outside edges, like I said. You could do that after, and I'll show you. You can kind of pinch and add glue there. But I didn't, I mean, I did on some of them, but not all of them, so I didn't see any huge advantage. Uh, okay, I'm going to continue to do this. I'm going to get all the way down to the bottom, and I'll be back. Now, because this piece here is a little bit bigger and wider, I'm using a little bigger and wider piece of the foam tape. So I'll get this one on here before I move forward and finish it off here. Okay, so you can see it really starting to take shape and looking really cool. And this is where, if you really wanted to, you could sneak a little glue in here in some of these little spaces. And maybe with a tweezer, kind of clamp that down. That does help it keep like that rounded shape. I mean, honestly, the way it looks right now, I think it looks great, but um, this is an option. You can make it reach over there but you really do have to pinch and hold for quite a while for that glue to set and dry because it's wanting to fight that that arc that we've put on there so you have to kind of give it a second and be patient with it so i'll just do a few of these that way i don't feel like i have to do all of them but it really does have uh, some nice dimension i think right and i've already taken the gathered twigs and gone around the outside edges of this one as well you can always brush more with the marker on there if you wanted it to be darker but I think it looks pretty good so I'm going to put those up there let's get our page back in front of us okay I just have things laying here I've decided I'm not going to put any twine on that and I'm going to take this piece that I had done the test coloring on and I'm going to adhere my November onto there and trim it out I think that'll be kind of cool. And I'll work in this area where I colored it in already. So it's that same kind of blue. Okay. So I'll let that dry for a minute, but I'm thinking that it's going to go over here maybe, November or November. Uh, I have to put photo mats on my photos, but you know, this is starting to take a nice shape. Still don't know for sure where that's going to go. Um, perhaps like so, or kind of like that already. That's a nice balance. So then maybe November will be down here like this. Uh, but I wanted to talk about this photo here because it's kind of cool. Uh, if you have, probably Android phones have this ability as well, but I have the newest iPhone uh, 15, I believe it is. And um, the feature has been around on the 14 as well, where you can do that, that portrait mode. And so that's what I did. I picked up some beautiful, huge, colorful leaves. I held them out in the sun at arm's length, and then I took the shot with that portrait mode, so it blurred out everything behind it, and it made just a really pretty photo. So I just need to decide, are my photo mats gonna be black? And I think so, I think so. Uh, I have just a little bit of room if I want to say something about the lollipops. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I should explain why we're sucking on lollipops. Uh, it still might go back there. So I'm going to take a minute to give this a final think and get all this on here, and I will be back and show you how it finished out. Okay, I had to do it. Free Tootsie Pops from the Park Center. I stamped this little label from a brand new stamp set. Retro Labels number two, that's CS326. I don't even have it labeled on here yet, but I will link it below. Just stamped it out in that same kind of teal color. I use Versifying Claire in the Warm Breeze, and I think I'm just going to stick it right there. Why not? I'm going to trim my pine bough off the top of there, and we are done with this week's page. As I'm finishing up, I will tell you that once again, I'm going to have to skip next week because I'm going on my crafting cruise where I'm teaching. I've talked about it a couple of times here. Crafters Therapy Cruise. Um, we leave, I fly to Florida on 
Friday. So Sunday I will not be here to do the video. I'll be on the boat getting ready to shove off. <laughs> so I'm going to do a two page spread just like I did with my Banff retreat page uh, because I'm sure there will be lots to take photos of at the cruise if it's anything like before. It's a great time. So let's get this in the planner and it looks pretty nice. We've got our little hiding journaling tag there. It kind of coordinates with the facing page. Uh, if you missed it in week 41 and 2, this is what I'm talking about with combining the page into a two-page spread because I was away. So that's what I will do for the cruise uh, next time you see me. So that'll be, you know, another two weeks from now. So I thank you for your patience on that. And I hope you like this week's page. It was fun to make. I did pop those up like I showed you, and they are going to probably get a little mushed. But with the foam tape, you know, that will kind of that'll kind of help keep a little dimension. Uh, but I thank you for watching and joining me once again. The weeks are flying by now. It's almost over. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks again.